Two teams in desperate need of a win. The one and six Ottawa Rough Riders against the two, four, and one, the BC Lions here at Lansdowne Park in Ottawa. The Riders, Dean Dorsey, prepares to kick off to start the game. Kennard Martin and Lorenzo Graham are deep for the BC Lions. The first of two meetings between these two teams this season is underway, and Lorenzo Graham has the football. Graham had a terrific game against Hamilton returning kickoffs last week and brings that one back to the 32-yard line, a 20-yard run back of Dorsey's 63-yard kickoff. And Doug Flutie will start at quarterback for the BC Lions tonight. Joe Pow Pow was the starter last week, but Flutie came on and played a terrific second half, even though the Lions lost and has earned the right to start tonight. And the, the medical report is he's still not 100%, but I think if you saw him throw the ball last week, you know he's pretty darn close. Bad shoulder and some rim cartilage problems kept his throwing effectiveness down for a few games. He puts it up long for Larry Willis, and it's complete at the Ottawa 45-yard line. So the Lions go right to work on Ottawa's Achilles heel. And that is their secondary, Willis catching it against Derek White for a 33-yard gain. You're going to see some control problems as far as feet go. They're going to be some slipping and sliding because not so long ago we had quite a downpour. Not a pretty good light show at the, at the same time. So there's still some moisture on the surface. Very severe electrical storm moved through here just before the game. We thought they might have to delay it, but it quickly moved out. And they are playing as scheduled at Lansdowne Park. Flutie throws, and it's high, intended for Ray Alexander down at the 35-yard line. There was even some hail involved in that weather system that swept through here. It's amazing how quickly it can change. Right now, it looks like it might even clear up. I think when Doug Flutie had a chance to sit back and watch Joe Pow Pow when Flutie was injured with that rib cartilage and shoulder problem, he had a, an opportunity to watch an older quarterback do some things and, and find out possibly a little bit more about the game here in the CFL. And I think he's learned from that. He's learned a lot, and he's still learning, according to Larry Q. Harich, which only makes sense. And this is a long pass, and it's down to the five-yard line, and it is dropped by Emmanuel Colbert. Catchable football, it appeared, but Colbert could not bring it in. We well, talk about opening it up very quickly. The Lions have done and I think gone where they wanted to go downfield spread out that defense see just even when he plants Flutie's back foot will slide a bit so he's going to be he, they're going to have to work a little bit on their stance and when they throw in a running back making cuts things like that they're going to be a little bit not tentative but controlled Lou Pasaglia who broke Dave Cutler's all-time scoring record in the Lions last game at BC Place will punt for the first time in the game the Lions are short a man Lorenzo Graham comes onto the field. Whether or not he gets out there in time or not, we don't know. Saglia is now ready to punt. And he gets a good snap. And a pretty good kick away that he angles toward the sideline. It's caught at about the seven-yard line by Stacy Dossie. And he's up to the 13, maybe the 14. Just underway at Lansdowne. The Riders will get the ball for the first time now. There is no score, but there was a flag on that play. A 38-yard punt by Pisagli, a six-yard run back by Dossi. And a pretty good example of kicking the ball to the sidelines and allowing the cover team, the punt team, to come down and really surround a pretty good returner in Dossi because he's been exciting a number of times and has been a bright spot in many situations for the Riders. George Black, the head referee, trying to sort doing? the penalties out. Larry Q. Harich, the 44-year-old head coach of the BC Lions. Looking on, Doug Landry in conversation with George Black and Scott Flagel, number 14 for Ottawa, moves into the conversation as well. The Lions have really dominated the Ottawa Rough Riders in recent years. Of course, many teams in the CFL have, but the Lions have won their last 13 games with Ottawa. The last time Ottawa beat BC was on September the 2nd, 1983. BC number 28. Major foul, unnecessary roughness, BC number 59. So two penalties against the Lions, and they will make them punt over again. It'll be third down and a long way to go. And the football will be placed at the BC 40-yard line. So instead of having the Ottawa Rough Riders pinned deep in their own end, the BC Lion defense does not figure to be in as good a position after this punt. Zag 
Likely a kicking into the wind in the first quarter. The wind has gone down quite a bit since that storm went through. But it will affect the kicking. Sagley gets it up there and the wind grabs it and pushes it back at the 45 yard line. The Riders field it at the 47 and are up near center field. So penalties, which can make such a big difference, really hurt the D.C. Lions and only a 24 yard kick this time by Pisaglia. Penalties that could have been avoided. And that's one thing that both coaches want to eliminate. The matter of concentrating, know what your job is and getting it done. And as Damon Allen knows very well, he has to come into this game and I think approach it with some patience. I, you know, with a team in a situation like this, you want to go deep, you want to make the big play quickly, but that isn't the way you play. David Allen with Tony Kimbrough backing up tonight in place of Ken Hobart from the 54. Allen has time, throws, and David Williams dives for it. And they really made the catch at the BC 37-yard line. Williams has not had a good season, the kind of season they were counting on. Reggie Barnes is back in the backfield for Damon Allen tonight. Tony Cherry really is to make room for him. The receiving core that Allen works with, with Williams and Stephen Jones outside, Reddick and Ellingson inside. And the offensive line, the unit that's played all season long up front. That was a 19-yard gain, David Williams down to the BC 37-yard line. Quick pass by Allen, a flag down, and a nice catch by Cornelius Reddick, who went high in the air to actually bat the ball down into his arms. But there is a flag. And it's offside against the BC Lions. Lions coming after the Ottawa offense, and Damon Allen makes a good read, and so does Cornelius Reddick, on top of which makes a pretty darn good catch, too. This is unusual. The Lions are the least penalized team in the league, at least coming into this game tonight. Offside, BC number 34, first down and five. But they've taken three penalties already, and the game is just over three minutes old. So it's first and five riders at the BC 32. And they jump offside again. Jolson, Greg Jolson, defensive tackle, was offside, and he pointed to an offensive lineman saying, he moved. We'll see. Ah, George Black, the referee, agrees with Jolson. Procedure, Ottawa number 58, first down. Right side of your screen. That's where Jolson moves from. Rob Smith, the left tackle, was the man called on the play, so Jolson was kind of looking down the line, saw some movement. So it's first and 10, back where the Riders started from the 38. Allen under pressure, and they're rolling this up fumble. No, now they say an incomplete pass. Didn't see a signal initially, but George Black then indicated an incomplete pass, and so it'll be second and 10 Ottawa. I know Ottawa expects to see different combinations of rushers. There's Landry. He starts the middle and moves to the other side. There's some stunting going on, as you see right away. McCready comes free. And Allen's arm was coming back and, and ready to throw. He did get into the throwing motion. Dietrich Wise, a newcomer on the BC defensive line, number 78 at defensive end. Second and 10 riders, BC 37. Allen, quick pass, and it's complete to Ellingson down to the 25-yard line. That's an Ottawa first down as the rain starts and lands down part. The Lion defense has a new face, Dietrich Wise, up front. He's only been with them for four or five days. The linebacking core very strong with Landry and Pless and Tony Visco. And the secondary, one new face, Robert Holland from Sacramento State. He's been with the Lions for six weeks, and he makes his first CFL start tonight. Ottawa from the BC 25, draw play, Conrad. And there's nothing there as Willie Pless got into the backfield to make the play. Ottawa showing us a different formation with Reggie Barnes going in motion. And you talk about an impact player, especially at the middle linebacker spot. Doug Landry is back and is healthy, just seems to wait. No one blocks him, he just sort of finds his way in the middle of all that mess and offensive lineman flying all over the place and gets involved in the tackle. But when he's on his game, he's definitely an asset to a defense. Second and 10. Riders at the BC 25. And the snap from center was dropped. Damon Allen backpedaled about six or seven yards, but uh, they're calling a legal procedure against Ottawa, so there is no fumble on the play. In our discussions with Steve Goldman, if he mentioned the word concentration once, must have been 10 times over a period of 10 or 15 minutes. And this is the type of thing that concentration means. Procedure, Ottawa on the center, penalties decline. 
third down. You got to when you come out of the huddle, you've got to know the snap count, you've got to know the formation. You got to be focused in on what you're, the heck you're supposed to do. And quite evidently, Ottawa's got to get themselves then at least their head into the game because that has been their breakdown throughout the season. Sure, and there was a fumble on the play. Ottawa recovered it. The Lions declined the penalty and put Ottawa in a third down situation. So poor execution as a result of concentration, timing, whatever you want to call it, costs Ottawa a chance to move into the end zone and score. Dean Dorsey will attempt to give them three points. Field goal try, and it's fumbled and picked up by Kimbrough, and he'll lose three yards, and the Lions will take over on downs with 9.57 remaining in the opening quarter at Lansdowne Park. Tony Kimbrough, the Ottawa Rough Riders, had trouble handling a snap from center, a snap that was a bit high on a field goal attempt. Ottawa fumbles the ball and gets it back but loses it on downs. And Lorenzo Graham will carry on first down for BC and he'll get a yard, maybe two. Glenn Kolka leads the Ottawa Tacklers. Well, they rotate the balls as the game goes on, but the ball being a little bit high and you see Kimbrough trying to squeeze it and get it down on the tee. That's a byproduct of the weather. It is raining. It started raining just a couple of minutes into the game. So that is adding to the problems that will exist in situations like that. Second down and eight Lions from their 30 yard line. Duck Flutie pressure. He steps away from it. And Flutie will make the first down with his tremendous speed and running ability up to the 45. And maybe the 46 yard line of the BC Lions, but he looked like he was going to be hit for a big loss. Instinctive movement, he steps up in the pocket, and Flutie will do that for a number of reasons to avoid a rush and also to get a better throwing angle so he doesn't have to throw over his offensive or jumping defensive lineman. But that couldn't be more timely, that step up right there, and then converting it into a first down. Talking about quarterbacks feeling pressure. Somebody was coming from the backside, and Flutie, I don't think saw it, but obviously felt it. <laughs> Lions from there, 46, first and 10. No score in the game. Hand off to Chris Skinner, who finds a good hole on the right side and picks up six yards. And there's a penalty flag down as well. Skinner working in the backfield with Lorenzo Graham, who'll alternate with Kennard Martin at Doug Flutie at quarterback. The receiving core. Willis back outside. He played slot back last week because Emmanuel Tolbert is back from the injured list and the offensive line. And again, that's the same crew that has been there Holding. All season long. BC number 58. First down repeated. Rocco Romano is called for holding. Now the Lions have a new offensive lineman named Ken Whitney, who just was released by the New Orleans Saints, a big Canadian, who was a second round draft pick this year, and they have very high hopes for him. And we expect to see him play some tonight. First down and 20 Lions after the holding penalty from their 36 yard line. Flutie throws to Willis, and he can't hang on covered by Daryl Hopper. Flutie faces an Ottawa front four that features the veteran Lloyd Lewis and John Kropke at tackle, Kulka and Stuman, Greg Stuman, the leading sacker on the riders at the ends, the linebacking core, Bruce Holmes in the middle, Patrick Wayne having a good year outside, and the secondary with the new face Patterson at defensive halfback, and Hopper's on the corner because of an injury, and we'll tell you about that as we go along. Second and 20, Lions, Flutie in trouble, gets it off. There's a flag down. He tried to dump it off to Skinner, but the pass never got there, and there was a flag on the play, holding against the Lions. Ottawa will decline, and BC will punt. Holding, BC number 66, penalties decline. Third down. It'll make a big difference for the Ottawa defense if they can continue to bring pressure only from the front four and, a, and then every once in a while throw a, a linebacker in there just for, for flavor. And that certainly helps the defense. The secondary that has been attacked on a number of times, and I think the more they can keep them out of man coverage with guys like Willis and Alexander, the better they'll be. Basaglia punting, and he can't hang on to the snap, and he kicks it off the turf, and it's caught by Troy Wilson, a line drive boot at the BC 47-yard line. A little razzle-dazzle with 7.55 left in the opening quarter. You're watching Molson Canadian Football Network. The rain has stopped at Lansdowne Park, and we actually see some clear sky. 
after about an hour of bopping on again rain and some electrical storms. Reggie Barnes carries on first down. Doug Landry hit him, and Barnes will maybe get a yard on the play. Well, there's a new technique when you have to kick into the wind. You have to keep the ball low, and I don't think you can keep it any lower than this. This is just a great play. I mean, Louie would want the snap back because he figures he should have caught it, I'm sure. But there's no chance of trying to pick the ball up and run. He just pops it downfield, heads up. Nice job by Troy Wilson to catch it, too. Second down and nine, Riders at the BC 46. No score, 7-16 left first quarter. Damon Allen wants a time. Dumps it off to Reggie Barnes, popped by Jefferson, stays on his feet, and is able to gain three yards before the BC Lions finished him off. Protection up front, enough time for Damon Allen to look downfield and look to his outs and then throw the ball because of finally pressure gets to him. The newcomer wise gets up and down and back, up and down. And that's what they're looking for, not necessarily getting there late, but a pass rush. Larry Harris figures it's one thing they've been missing and they desperately need it. The veteran Ottawa offensive line gets set to send the ball back for a field goal try from 51 yards. And it's place. Dorsey has it in the air. Is it far enough? It just got there. Dean Dorsey with Damon Allen holding. Kicks a long field goal in Ottawa to score first. The only change here on the field goal team, as you mentioned, Bob, is Damon Allen. He's now in holding for Tony Kimbrough, who had that bobble in the first time Ottawa tried the field goal. And that makes Dean Dorsey 17 out of 22 on the season. Damon Allen talks with Steve Goldman and the Ottawa Rough Riders, scoring a 51-yard field goal after messing up a 27-yard try when Kimbrough couldn't bring down a bit of a high snap with rain pelting Lansdowne Park. Dorsey, of course, missed a 39-yard field goal try and a 31-30 loss to Hamilton a few weeks ago. The Ottawa Roughriders find all sorts of ways to lose. Tony Kimbrough, eager to get a chance to play. Kimbrough showed some very good signs. The quarterback last year has not played it down this year. The kickoff caught by Lorenzo Graham. Kennard Martin, pardon me, he's up to the 40, sheds a couple of tackles, and is all the way out to the 43-yard line. Kennard Martin and Lorenzo Graham work in tandem on the kick returns and also at the tailback position for the BC Lions. That was a 31-yard return by Martin. Flutie, though he's missed a couple of games, remains the leading rusher with 216 yards for the BC Lions. I'm sure a statistic he doesn't want to be number one in for the Lions by the end of the season. That's something they're going to have to get going with guys like Graham and Martin and Skinner in the backfield. They can carry the load as they started to last week. And Kuharic wants that running game worked. And that's what he liked about Flutie last week in the second half was how he took advantage of the running game. But Flutie tries to pass on first down to Graham. And it goes incomplete. Get an opportunity to take a shot at somebody, especially someone like Holmes, who's been involved in 50 tackles and leads the Ottawa defense, and that's just a little nudge. Christensen maybe ought to keep his head up now for a little while because uh, Holmes <laughs> well, is a... Well, he'll have to come in uh, Bruce Holmes' territory one pointer in this evening. We could refer to Bruce Holmes as a volatile player. He won't forget that. Nothing wrong with that bump. A draw play on second down. Skinner breaks a tackle or two against his former teammates and maybe picks up a couple of yards to the 45 and leave BC in a third and eight situation. Greg Stuman in on the tackle. Steve Goldman's defense holds. Good pressure to the football. The movement is on Flutie, but Flutie will sl slide this ball into Skinner. Now there's no place for Skinner to go. The Riders have taken away those gaps, and when he does pop through, you've got guys like Stuman, Holmes, and the rest of the Riders coming in and pursuing and get to the football. BC has the third best rushing average per game in the CFL on 120 yards. And Larry Q. Hartz doesn't mind that kind of a play, a draw on second and long. He wants to see the run established. Pisagli, a nice job going up to grab a high snap and a good kick. And Stacy Dossie finds a seam. And is up to the 40, the 41 yard line. 528 left in the opening quarter in Ottawa. Leads BC 3-0.
Bob Irving and Neil Lumsden at Lansdowne Park in Ottawa. Five minutes, 20 seconds left. Opening quarter. Ottawa leading BC 3 0. And Damon Allen throwing to David Williams on first down, and he can't squeeze the ball up near center field. David Allen missed the last game in Calgary with a knee problem. Ken Hobart started at quarterback, but the Riders lost the game in the last minute. They've taken Hobart off the active roster, and Kimbrough is a backup. And that's Troy Wilson, defensive back for Ottawa, with a check on his ribs. There's been a change in the secondary for the BC Lions as Ken Hobart has the plastic over the paper to try to chart the plays. The Lions have got Holland on the corner and Remy Trudell at halfback. Damon Allen on second down has all night finally throws but again it sails on him and is tipped and the Riders can't accept the gift. Stephen Jones had the ball come right to him and didn't quite know what to do with it. Well this is sort of a, a secondary thought. The ball's thrown. Jones is open on the sidelines. Now he's just sort of hanging around. <laughs> like a good defensive back oh, should he knocks the ball down. Stephen Jones just got the pin pulled out of his baby finger pin that was holding it together for a number of weeks he got it pulled out yesterday Baker with the fifth best punting average in the CFL will punt for the first time in the game low snap scoops it up and gets an end over end kick away it will get a good Ottawa bounce Kennard Martin finally fields it his 11 yard line he slips and falls Kravanovic grabs him and down he goes of beauty but Baker got 58 yards out of that punt. Well they have a player will always say as long as the job gets done it doesn't have to be pretty. But you want to catch the ball in the air. Most people will tell you try to eliminate that bounce because that bounce especially in weather like this can really create a lot of headaches not only from not catching the ball but from coverage like from Pradonovic. Riders have been hurt by some big kick returns punt returns in particular this year but outstanding coverage that time. So the Lions are deep in their own end from the 12 first and 10 for Doug Flutie. 4.15 left opening quarter. 3-0 Ottawa. Flutie with lots of time. Willis wide open at the 30. Larry Ray Willis is up to the 33-yard line. Larry Q. Hartz, the BC coach, said, I'd love to see Flutie throw 12 passes to Larry Willis tonight. Not that necessarily complete the meal, just go his way that often. And I think he'd like those 12 to be completed, yeah, sure though, because would. Willis is the type of guy in a medium route or even going deep, threatens defenses and really makes you think about it if you've got him one-on-one -on -one in the corner. As that last play, you see him just limp off with a, a minor twist to his left leg. 21 yard gain. Willis uh, hurt that ankle a little bit earlier. Be a big loss to the Lions if he can't continue. Flutie to Emmanuel Tolbert who slips as he catches the ball and then is stopped immediately. The ball pops loose but the whistle had clearly blown. Derek White made the stop and it'll be a gain of five for the Lions. Only his 11th reception. I think if the Lions want more production in their passing game they have to not rely on Ray Alexander and Larry Willis, but go to the slot backs. Emmanuel Tober, Jay Christensen. That's an important part of the game. Larry Willis having his left knee examined. It'll be second down and four yards to go for the BC Lions at their 39. Flutie to throw to Ray Alexander. Complete at the 50. That's on Derek White again, and it gives BC a first down. A quick breaking pattern over the middle and it has to be quick. The offensive linemen have chop block. So the ball has to be thrown quickly because those big guys are going to get back up and get in the face of the quarterback. And the middle was open because Bruce Holmes blitzed. Ottawa Rough Riders have allowed 341 yards a game against in passing and that's the worst in the CFL. Flutie hands off on first down and around the right side and out of bounds at the Ottawa 54 yard line was either Kennard Martin or Lorenzo Graham. It's Graham, number 28. Martin wears 29. And they'll gain five yards on the play. Steve Goldman talked about concentration, confidence, discipline, all the things that are lacking when you're losing. Also talked about being at least on defense and special teams. We have to be better tacklers, he said. We're missing sacks and missing big plays because we're not wrapping people up. Second and short, Flutie sprints right. 
And he'll turn it inside and get to the 47-yard line of Ottawa and out of bounds at about the 46. That's enough for a BC first down. And Doug Flutie absolutely has to run when the opportunity is there for him to be effective, and he did it that time. Great balance, big, great control of his body. Watch this little bit of a point. He cuts inside here, under control, bounces off a blocker. You think he's going to go down there, springs back up for another two yards. Those are things you don't teach. You just either can do it or you can't. Some athletic ability there displayed by Doug Flutie. Larry Ray Willis is back in the game. The Lions are first down at the 45 of Ottawa. Flutie's in the pocket. He throws, and Alexander goes high to make an excellent catch down at the Ottawa 30-yard line. As the game goes on, watch Doug Flutie, how his, mo his throwing motion will change. Watch right here. I was almost a sidearm. He will change that motion depending on the situation. You know, I used to play with a fellow that threw the ball a little bit like that. Tom Wilkinson. Do Wilk whatever you have to do to get the ball to the receiver. Wilkie came from a lot of different angles, and Flutie <laughs> uh, does that as well from the 30. There's a nice drive going. Sprints out to the right, throws it back the other way, and has Graham White open at the Ottawa 20-yard line. Bruce Holmes made the stop, but it's close to another BC first down. A minute left, opening quarter, and 3-0 Ottawa in front. Defenses get stretched laterally when you play against a quarterback like Doug Flutie. And that means you're going to tire out defenses. A lot of running around. See Holmes drop to the wide side of the field. Now he comes in pursuit. The ball is thrown. He has to make that reaction. But that's tough on defenses and the linemen. A lot of chasing around that guy. And Holmes can run around. He covers the field very well. Flutie swings it out to Graham. Tackled immediately. Good defensive work by the Ottawa Rough Riders. Paul McGowan, one of their linebackers. As Larry Kuharich watches what he calls an average team. He says, we're an average team that is improving. But he says, we're good in specific areas, units. The offensive line has been pretty good. Likes the way the running backs are starting to come together. But because you play well as a group, doesn't make you a good football team. Second and eight. Lions at the Ottawa 17-yard line. Flutie will take off, and he'll get the first down. He's down to the one-yard line, and did he get into the end zone? No, they rule him down just before he hit the goal line. And that play ends the first quarter on a bright note for the D.C. Lions, who trail the Ottawa Rough Riders by three. Well, Rough Riders lead 3-0 as the second quarter begins, but that could change very quickly and likely will. The Lions are first and goal at the Ottawa one-yard line. Floating to Kennard Martin, and he's in for the touchdown, but hold it a minute. There are penalty plays. Penalty against Ottawa for offside, so the Martin touchdown will stand. Offside, Ottawa number 73, decline, touchdown. I'm sure the Ottawa coaching staff is concerned that they were scored on, but it's how they were scored on. A long drive, quite simply a lead to the right side, a good cut back by Martin, and he gets in. But that's an excellent performance on behalf of the quarterback, Flutie, and by the complete offense. They put together one heck of a drive. Ten plays, 98-yard drive by the BC Lions. Highlighted by some nifty running by Doug Flutie, who escaped a couple of jams to get first downs for the BC Lions, and they go in front 7-3. to three. Nothing particularly fancy. Romano from left guard pulls around. The center will block down, and so will the guard to the right side. They have a lead back in Romano, and even offside, the riders couldn't stop him down close. Well, the BC offense has been quite productive in the last few games. They are among the league leaders, or close to the league leaders, in many categories. Doug Flutie adding to his running yardage in that drive and also his throwing numbers. He's got his plays, some plays on his left arm. You perhaps saw his left forearm. Well, that would be the ready list that they prepare for every game. And it varies, I'm sure, a little bit from team to team. Just, I'm sure, nothing but a ref else but a reference. I'm sure it isn't his Bible. He goes with what he feels, but... In certain situations, it gives him a choice on second and long, certain part of the field, what to go with. 
Ryan, Rick Ryan will kick off for BC, not Lou Pasaglia. They've been doing that much of the year. And Stacy Dossi will return for the Ottawa Rough Riders, and he's up to their 37-yard line. A lot of speculation the last week about Steve Goldman's future in Ottawa. Ottawa President Hap Nichols cleared that up at a news conference this weekend. The board of directors of the Ottawa Football Club state now and emphatically, and for the last time this year, that such speculation is completely unfounded. The management team of Steve Goldman as director of football operations and head coach and Joanne Polak as general manager have the unanimous support of all the members of the board of directors. We believe that the most essential component of success is stability and continuity. Continuity. Something this operation, as you are all aware, has been lacking over the past uh, several years. We believe that the strategy that we developed a year ago is paying off. The Rough Riders are closer to success, both on and off the field, than they have been in for years. Every member of the organization has great faith in the ability of this football team to be successful and anticipate turning close games into victories. It is for these reasons that there will be no changes in coaching and management of this organization during this football season. So Steve Golden gets the infamous vote of confidence from Hap Nichols, the president of the Ottawa Rough Riders, but this one seemed to be very sincere. And Letting everybody know that there should not be any further speculation about Goldman's position with the Ottawa Rough Riders. He'll be here for the year. Well, they were holding polls in the newspapers, the two newspapers here. Uh, they want fans to comment radio shows. I mean, there was an awful lot of talk about Steve Goldman, and certainly the easy way out is to make a big act, get rid of Goldman, and try to find another coach. But I don't necessarily think that's the way, as Hap Nichols explained. You need some continuity, and you have to show some support. Second and nine, Ottawa Rough Riders, they had a procedure call on their first down play, which you saw when Nichols was commenting on second down, or first and 15, they gained six, and now they're sitting at second and nine, and they're called for procedure again. Those are the things that have cost the Riders football games, and it is clearly, as you can see in the hands of the players, they're the ones that are making the procedure. mistakes. Procedure, Ottawa number eight, second down repeated. That's Cornelius Reddick, slot back, who's called for a procedure. No, it raises the question, you know, when you have breakdowns, Neil, what do you do? Is it the coach's responsibility to make sure those stop, or do you get rid of the players who keep making the breakdown? It's an age-old question for losing football teams. Second down and 14 for Ottawa. Damon Allen throws wide open on the right sideline as Stephon Jones, and he's up to the 47, and looks like he has an Ottawa first down. I've been impressed by the way Jones has played over the last few weeks. A number of games ago, we showed a close-up of his baby finger on his right hand where he had broken in half and had a pin. I said earlier that that pin was taken out yesterday. That's no easy task. We're not talking about a hangnail or just a cut. That finger was broken in half, and he played with that pin in the finger. That shows you something. 14-yard gain for 30-year-old Stefan Jones, former Edmonton Eskimo has been a bright spot for Ottawa this year. First down carry and Reggie Barnes was not able to get on track. The Lions have done a terrific job of silencing Reggie Barnes who really tore things up in his first three games without Ottawa before getting hurt. Showing up the sprint out formation Barnes sitting oftentimes he'll block from there and Landry read it as well as you possibly can by just when the ball was handed off he was already in and past the offensive line. Barnes ran for 336 yards in his first three games with Ottawa and then got hurt. Second and 11 riders from there, 46. And Allen tries to dump it off to Reggie Barnes, but is hit by Dietrich Wise just as he released the ball, and it goes incomplete. Well, you mentioned earlier, Bob, Wise has only been in camp for about a week. He has done a total of about 15 one-on-ones. In other words, he's gone into practice and gone up against offensive linemen to test for the coaches how he is and what his ability is like. He was a late cut from Green Bay. And as I mentioned before, they brought him in for pressure. They're looking for a consistent pass rush from the four. I think they may be close. If Wise can keep playing and putting pressure on like that, they maybe even get closer. Lions have the fewest sacks in the CFL, and that's the kind of pressure that they need in order to make life easier for those defensive backs to take all the heat. Good move by Perdanovic, making sure he has the ball, the one he wants, a dry one. Don't try to snap or settle for something you don't think you can get back to the punter. Baker gets a low kick. 
Bounces down to the 27-yard line, mishandled by the B.C. Lions, but they are able to grab it and will have the ball when we come back. We're early in the second quarter. It's worse them with width. Get inside out on Worse them with width. What did you Joe D'Alessandro, the offensive line coach of the Ottawa Rough Riders, just finishing up a pep talk with his unit. As the BC Lions have the ball at their 30 yard line, first and 10. Flutie looks for Alexander, and the pass was thrown just a little bit behind him, or Alexander would have had a big gainer because he had Daryl Hopper beat. Well, Hopper's been criticized for not being able to cover one on one efficiently enough right here. He gets a bit of separation between Alexander, but he comes back and makes the play. He was cut earlier on this week, and uh, if it wasn't for some bad luck for the Riders, he might still be watching the TV tonight. Released outright on Saturday, but Brent Young hurt his ankle in practice Sunday, and they got a hold of Hopper before he got out of town. And here he is playing tonight, a chance to redeem himself. Second and ten, Polka after Flutie, and it's intercepted, and Crofty has a touchdown. Stuman, Greg Stuman. sprint looks like he's going and right there it looks almost like he's pump faking or trying to get the ball into Skinner's hands. And Stuman was either going to be there for the sack or for the interception. 21 yard run by Greg Stuman for the Ottawa touchdown as Doug Flutie. You know you wonder if he meant to release the ball on that play. He's explaining it to Larry Q. Harich or if it just slid out of his hands as he as he pumped and then tried to hang on to it. Odd looking play. <laughs> I can tell you what there's no explanation that will satisfy a coach after that happens. And Ottawa has the lead. Molson and CFN proud to bring you the best of Canadian football. Greg Stillman was the outstanding defensive player in the CFL in 1987 as a member of the BC Lions and he has hurt his former team with a 21 yard interception return for a touchdown. Lions on the Dorsey kickoff bring it back to the 43 yard line. Lorenzo Graham with the run back. I don't know whether you say he reacted or thought before he reacted but I think Flutie changes his mind right now. Because I know Skinner has turned around almost like it's going to be a quick screen. But with the ball being a little bit greasy, I think it's one of those things where you go, yikes. <laughs> or words to that effect. <laughs> yeah. That was really an odd looking play as Flutie either tried to force it into Skinner or as you say, Neil changed his mind in mid throw and what a costly mistake. And Chris Skinner has the ball and a big gain. Across the 45 and out of the 41 yard line of the Ottawa Rough Riders. Big run by Chris Skinner. These last few weeks, I don't think I've seen Chris Skinner run any better when he was when with Edmonton or with Ottawa last year. Watch how he hits up, kicks it out, gets a good block on Stuman, and then even a better block to the outside by Alexander. He cuts in there, then back out to the sidelines. Get the man to your outside. Alexander doesn't have to muscle him. Position. It's all position, and he did it well. 25-yard run by Skinner. First and 10 in the handoff. Skinner, big hole, right side. A little misdirection play. Fumbles the ball. And the Ottawa Rough Riders have recovered. body up to make a move or a cut the one thing you have to make sure is you don't open the ball up don't expose it and I think when Skinner turns sideways here makes a good cut see the ball come up and back and he swings his body around just enough for Derek White to put his helmet the ball comes away from your body you become more vulnerable Jordan how you doing at home I'll see you in a couple days buddy Hi, Lorna. recovered by Scott Flagel Two turnovers by the Lions, who had the worst plus-minus or giveaway-takeaway ratio in the league. Damon Allen goes long on the first down, and it's no good. Intended for former Lion David Williams, who had double coverage. Well, last week, Stefan Jones and David Williams had the ball thrown to them, and they didn't make a catch. If you want to win football games, you have to utilize these two guys. Little stutter step and now acceleration. And just a touch of a push. 
trying to get Rick Ryan away so he can make the move to the ball. He's as subtle and as good as pushing off and using his hands when the ball arrives as anybody. Williams numbers with the BC Lions this year 21 catches for 282 yards. He's been plagued by injuries. He has no, also not played up to his ability. Allen on second down gets it off to Reggie Barnes. And he's to the 40, the 45. Barnes up to the 53 of Ottawa. Well set up to the short side of the field, Reggie Barnes. Back off a knee injury. Watch the right side of your screen. The quick pressure to Damon's backside. He knows it's coming because Barnes let him go and Roper. Good block by Roper. Barnes makes a cut inside. Williams has a man downfield. And what we saw Reggie Barnes do a number of times when he was healthy was turn a play, a normal one, into a big one. Allen to Reggie Barnes. He's to the 50 and down to the 48-yard line of the BC Lions. And after gaining 28, he adds another eight or nine. Barnes missed the last three games with a knee injury. And uh, he said it wasn't quite right, but he looks better now as the game moves on. And he'll probably feel better because he'll probably stop thinking about it and probably has already. Going into a game, you always wonder if you've got a brace on, even though you've practiced with it, it feels a little foreign to you. And then all of a sudden, you break a run, and you say, what brace? What knee? I don't have a problem. That's right. He did look a little tentative the first couple of times he handled the ball, but some contact now as he picks up nine yards. It'll be second and one Ottawa from the BC 48. And the handoff up the middle gets the first down for the Ottawa Rough Riders. David Conrad carrying. Eight minutes, 50 seconds left in the second quarter. Ottawa leading 10 to 7 at what they call the Rough House. Lands down Park in Ottawa, which hasn't necessarily been the Rough House, although the Riders have played some terrific football, but not good enough to win a lot of nights, and that's what it's all about. They're one and six after a four and 14 season. Allen throws all alone as Williams, a flag down. Williams to the 22, the 20, and inside the 20 of the BC Lions, but there is a flag down. And it'll come back. You don't even have to speculate. All you have to see is where that flag lands. Referee will always throw it in the area of where the infraction took place. It's right in the area where the big guys line up. Holding, Ottawa number 25. First down repeated. And it was one of the little guys that got called for holding, David Conrad. The fullback is nabbed for holding. Oh, he's not that little at 220. Well, you talk about things you can't control and helpless feelings, penalties like that. Instead of being at the BC 19-yard line, the Ottawa Rough Riders are at their 54-yard line, and they're looking at first down and 20. Of course, if Conrad doesn't hold, maybe they don't make the play. To Reddick, down to the 38 of BC. Cornelius Reddick gets a lot of it back. Well, with Reddick in at that slot back position, he adds another dimension, very similar to what Gerald Alphen added to the offense. Makes it tough to double the wide receiver to that side because you have to respect Reddick's speed. This ball is perfectly thrown to the outside. And Good coverage by Holland, but the ball's great. Robert Holland didn't do a bad job. He got a hand in there, but somehow they got through to Reddick. Seven and a half minutes left in the second quarter at Lansdowne Park. Ottawa leading BC by three. And Ottawa second down and short at the BC 38. The handoff to Reggie Barnes, who comes off the right side for a yard, but he's going to come up a yard short. And you hear the fans already, you know what they want to see Steve Goldman do, and that's gamble. We want to be able to get to the middle linebacker in short yardage situations because he'll play a little bit deeper, as you can see there, and then make the read. See him edging to the left before the ball's even snapped. He's in there with a host of other lines. And I don't think there's any question to go for this. Father may not be, Neil, but Dean Dorsey has made an appearance on the field. It's actually third down and a little more than a yard, maybe closer to a yard and a half. And as it stands right now, the Ottawa Rough Riders are not going to gamble. They will ask Dean Dorsey to kick a field goal. And we'll probably see that, that move by the offensive line to go down the snap three-point stance. 
on the sound made by the holder, which is Damon Allen, try to pull somebody offside. So Dorsey will attempt a 44-yard field goal into a very, very light win. Damon Allen to hold. Dorsey has plenty of distance, and the direction was good as well. 47 left second quarter Ottawa goes up by six. Ottawa Steve Goldman admits he's a conservative percentage type of coach and so instead of gambling on third and a yard and a half he opted for a field goal and Dorsey delivered a 44 yarder. Dorsey kicks it off out of bounds at the BC 37 and the Lions will undoubtedly ask him to do it again. Now Neil you would have gone for it on third and one and a half. <laughs> Why? But, but I, I wouldn't catch the wrath of all the fans if I didn't. I don't know. I just think you have to open it up sometimes. And I think you have to go with the momentum of the movement. We will kick off Ottawa number two of your offense. And I don't necessarily think maybe if I'd been on the sidelines, I would say, oh, no, we're, we'll take the sure thing. But it's a 44 yard field goal. And, and that's not a sure thing. No, it's not. And again, Goldman makes no bones about the kind of coach he is. And he's been second guessed many times this season. When you're one and six, you will get second guessed. But Steve is going to play it by what he believes in. And he believed in a field goal that time. And of course, when your field goal kicker makes it, you tend to look a little better. Always. Dorsey will have to kick off again as he kicked it out of bounds this time from the 30 yard line and we'll give you the view that the BC return men have Dorsey punches a low one down the middle this time and it's grabbed at the 21 by Lorenzo Graham and he gets it back close to the Lion 40 a 20 yard return of a 60 yard kick out. our Molson MVP in our last game on CFN was defensive end Michael Gray of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers who forced a couple of fumbles recovered one as the Bombers beat the Argos last week in Toronto will be around after tonight's game with another Molson MVP Ottawa leading by six six and a half minutes left second quarter at Lansdowne Park BC Lions first and ten from their 40 yard line Mike Flutie started at quarterback still there and he hands off on first down to Chris Skinner, not much running room. Lloyd Lewis, veteran tackle of the Ottawa Rough Riders, makes the stop. A play that BC has run and had success with to this point. Again, guard come around. You've got your running back leading you. But Lewis plays down the, uh, the line of scrimmage, doesn't take the fake, and the movement is right in the hole. Says you can burn me a couple times, but not three. Sixth year with Ottawa, Lloyd Lewis. Second and nine. Lions from there, 41. Flutie with pressure gets the ball away. Larry Willis, good catch, and what a throw by Flutie. Up to the 52, that's a first down. If you ever wondered about the arm strength of Doug Flutie, we saw it there. It's good. The wheels will come off, change the pace a little bit, come out, that's a angle back right here, just a little bit where the ball is thrown. It's great when you have the receiver, or the, the receiver has the ability and the space to adjust to where the ball is thrown. Like a good pitcher, low to the outside, so it can't be picked off. Flutie really zipped that one out there. First and 10 Lions. Their 52-yard line. Skinner will carry on first down and run right under the arms of Stuman and Glenn Polka. Little or no game. Well, Polka's been playing the weak side defensive end spot. Stuman plays the strong side. Here's Kalkamania. Take individuals and, and go with their strengths. And one of his strengths, other than his body, happens to be his sort of his craziness. And that's a, one of the things they sell here. Sell your talent, sell your personnel. That's marketing. Kalkamania ruled on that play. Second and ten Lions. Flutie and the receiver Christensen was belted by Derek White before the ball got there. And that's about as clear cut a pass interference as you're going to see. No one noticed there was only three flags. Watch how quickly the flags come in here. But you know, his timing is just a hair off. Forward pass interference, Ottawa number 31, first down. Here they come. Whoosh. Flutie really, again, threw from an awkward position. Neely was on his back foot and had his other leg off the turf. Didn't get a lot on the ball. He comes from everywhere. So it'll be first down. 
And that moves the ball into Ottawa territory at the 50-yard line of the Rough Riders. Flutie faking and throwing over the middle, Larry Willis. And he was not looking back for the ball, I don't believe. I think Flutie had him where he wanted to, in the lane, inside Daryl Hopper. And before Scott Flagel can get over and make the play, kind of a... A helpless looking play, wasn't it? The ball just ends up in there. It didn't seem like, like you say, Willis was even expecting it. Willis running that seam in the pass looked like it might be on target about halfway down, but Willis never turned around. So it's second and ten for the BC Lions from the Ottawa 50 yard line. Four and a half minutes left in the first half. Ottawa leading by six. Flutie throws to Alexander. He goes high to bring it down at the 25. And again, they work on Derek White. And Alexander shaken up on that play. It looks like his left leg. Move to get away from the bump. Now you've got to play catch up and the ball's over to the outside. So Derek White takes a wave at the ball just in case he could knock it down. But at the same time, his right hand was wrapped around to make the tackle. Pocket watch simply indicates how long it takes Flutie to get rid of the ball. That's quickly. Anytime an offensive line can get you between three and four seconds, you're kind of comfortable. I think that's an ideal scenario for a quarterback. It doesn't mean you have to wait that long to throw it, mind you. When you throw it in 2-6, you don't give the defense any chance at all, really, to get to you. Ray Alexander tries to walk it off as the Lions are on the Ottawa 25 with a first down. Flutie pumps, looks back the other way, gets away from Patrick Wayne as a man wide open down at the 15-yard line. That's Skinner, and he's to the 10 and inside of the Ottawa 9-yard line. Even when there are good conditions, Doug Flutie and quarterbacks like Flutie, Ham, Dunnigan, Burgess, can make a guy miss, especially when you're coming full speed. And that's what happens here. Go for the big hit, as Patrick Wayne does. Just a slight movement to the one side, especially with the wet surface. It's tough to control yourself. I mean, you can buy yourself that kind of extra time, as Flutie did. You will invariably find a man open. Skinner, a 16-yard gain, and it's first and goal. We see at the Ottawa 9. He'll get it to the six, hit hard by a couple of Ottawa tacklers. And one of those hits uh, was just a little bit late, I thought. Well, the offensive line takes ex exception to it. Kolka has a shot at him. Hits coming in right now. Lloyd Lewis. And I think Lewis got away with one there. Second and goal, Lions at the Ottawa six. Flutie, Stillman's after him. Flutie looked like he could run it into the end zone if he'd held on to the ball and turned the corner. He's got enough speed, but he elected to try and pass it, and Christensen was well covered. Well, when you're approaching as a quarterback and running towards the line of scrimmage, you've got two options, tuck it and go, or throw it. And he made the wrong choice. 2.52 to go until halftime at Lansdowne Park. We have two minutes and 52 seconds to go until halftime. Lou Pasaglia is on to attempt a field goal for the BC Lions from the Ottawa 13-yard line. Doug Flutie to hold. That was a good BC drive. It's stalled at this point. And Pasaglia puts it up and through. And once again, we have a three-point game with Ottawa leading 13-10. to 10. Pasaglia with a bittersweet night last week breaking Cutler's all-time record but missing three or four field goals and the Lions losing by two points. Tonight at halftime we look at a man who truly enjoys his position BC receiver Ray Alexander. I think there's no better position on the football field than wide receiver. You know um, a lot of guys out there are going to get mad at what I'm about to say. I think those are the most talented guys on the team. <laughs> Neil Lumsden, what's the best position you know of on the football field? <laughs> Going Go straight ahead and on your feet. <laughs> Upright, perpendicular. Just crossing the goal line. Well, you've, obviously, you've got to like what you do, and Alexander does like and does it very well. 
36 now to go until halftime. Lions 2 4 and 1, but they're only three points behind Saskatchewan in the West and Ottawa, even though they're 1 and 6, as Pasaglia tries a short kickoff and Christensen has it at the 48 yard line, or did he lose it? He had it initially. Oh, and the Ottawa Rough Riders got it. The Lions executed that beautifully, but Christensen could not hang on to the ball. Perfect execution for an onside kick. It's almost like the ball was thrown to him. No, you're not watching a quick out. You're watching a short kick. And just tenacity by Ellingson to get the ball away from Christensen, because that was the Lions' ball. Oh, Christensen won't sleep well over that one. <laughs> it was right there. Lions really caught the Ottawa Rough Riders off guard. Ellingson recovered the ball and is in the game as Ottawa has it at the BC 47. Damon Allen dumps it off to Reddick and he's down right there at the 42 yard line. The ball came loose, but they rule that he was down and it'll be a five yard gain as we see David Williams and Robert Holland getting into it. Frustrating year for David Williams, signed as a free agent to a big contract, has not produced the numbers that he was counting on producing or that the Ottawa Rough Riders expected from him. Again, in fairness to him, he has been bothered by injuries, missed most of training camp with an injury. Second and five, Ottawa. Damon Allen tries to dump it off to Reddick, but it was knocked down at the line of scrimmage. We'll try in there to watch Damon Allen when he drops back who he's looking at. And he was looking to his left, specifically David Williams. Williams has complained that he hasn't got the ball oh, enough. Yeah. And he doesn't get it thrown to him. He's the big play guy. He says so. And he wants the ball. But right there, Damon Allen is looking nowhere but the left side. Then comes through and throws to Reddick over the middle on a delay. And the ball's knocked down. Terry Baker in the punt. The Ottawa Rough Riders will not try. A field goal, which would be about a 49-yarder. And Dorsey kicked a 44-yarder just a few minutes ago in this second quarter. One of the BC players just went and jumped on the ball as Ottawa was getting set to snap it. On a third down and less than five, if that's offside against BC, it'll give Ottawa a first down. The center was just simply standing up, and I think he was signaling to the referee, I want a, a dryer ball. I mean, don't make a fuss over. Just give me a dry ball. No penalty. So we'll watch Baker punt. Good snap. Flag down. As Baker's kick goes out of bounds at the BC 16-yard line. Two minutes even left in the first half. Ottawa leading 13 to 10. And a penalty. And it's holding against the BC Lions. But they will assess it from the point where the ball went out of bounds. Holding, BC number 39. First down. Doug Landry caught holding after Baker had punted the ball. And so the Lions will be back at their eight yard line. And they'll have two minutes to try to move it downfield. Doug Flutie already put together a 98 yard. BC touchdown drive in this game. This one would be 102 if he can take it all the way. Hands off on first down and finding a good hole off the left side across the 15 is Chris Skinner, who was carried very effectively in the second quarter. Pretty good call and a good job on the left side of the offensive line. You're going to see the blocking right here. There's the hole. Almost like a drop back pass, a little bit of a draw. And if Stuman doesn't come back and hustle and get Skinner's foot, he could have probably added another 10, 15 yards on that. Some pretty flagrant holding in there too, but if you get away with it, it's, it's not, not holding. <laughs> Second and just over two, the handoff, and Polka wraps up the BC ball carrier, and he won't get close to the first down, and the Riders should get the ball back on the next play. Krafke makes the first contact. Here comes the guard pulling around Grown Wagon. But you see it's in behind the play. The guards and the, and the blocking back is out front. But Skinner never gets to the point of attack of where they want to open that hole up. Kulka and Krafke just take it away. Krafke in for the injured, injured John Mandrich. 
I think every time I've seen Kropke, he's had a whale of a football game. He's tenacious. He's very physical. Initially replaced Lloyd Lewis. Now Mandarich is out. Kropke staying in there. Third down and less than five for BC and somebody on Ottawa move. Now there's going to be a, a motion penalty against one team or the other. Procedure against the center of the Ottawa Rough Riders or BC Lions. Well, the defense trying to play some games. There's some movement early. Perdanovic steps in. And they call the Lions for the movement, even though both got back to the line of scrimmage. Belange was called on the procedure, so he had moved prematurely. That's the 15th penalty of the game. With the Lions kicking so and so deep in their, their end, Ottawa's going to bring 10 people. I think they'll probably try to set up a return to get themselves good field position to see if they can get seven points before the end of the half. High snap, Pasaglia does a good job to get it away. No win factor at all. Good bounce for Pasaglia. Dossi at center field, and he's back to the BC 42-yard line with it. So the Ottawa Rough Riders leading 13 to 10 at a minute 15 to move in and then expand on that lead. We see that there's two examples why I'm not a coach. I would have gone for the short yardage when Steve Goldman didn't. He got a field goal and I would have set up a return and the riders go after him. So it's, it's quite evident that I will never be a coach. Not that I want to be, mind you. <laughs> you have told me that of all the things that there are to do on this earth, the last one you would want to do is coach football. Well, pros. Yes. I'll coach kids all right. and do. Damon Allen. From the 41, he'll take off and run with it. Somewhat gingerly, out of bounds at the 30, a gain of 11. Allen does not have the spring in his legs that we normally see. He's been out with a knee injury and clearly is not 100%. You can see that when he runs. Well, two different styles. Flutie's got the quick feet. Damon Allen is more of a strider. Still very quick off the mark, but I think you can see right here where he's just not quite as aggressive as he might have been if he didn't have that sore leg. But he gained 11 yards on a first down to the BC 30. A minute eight left in the first half. And Allen puts it up deep in the end zone, and it's knocked away. Norm Jefferson on the corner. Single coverage on David Williams. And Williams is going to try to get it to the outside. Jefferson's in tight. has taken away that inside. A little bit of a push. Jefferson's got perfect position on the ball when it's thrown to the inside. And if the ball's over to the sidelines, Williams has a shot. But Jefferson, good tight coverage. The more we see of Norm Jefferson, the more impressed we are. Rookie from Louisiana State, who's played very well. Good kick returner, too. Second down and 10, Ottawa from the BC 30. A minute two left in the first half. Allen, lots of time, puts it into the end zone. in the backside and a great catch by Stephon Jones. Beautiful throw by Damon Allen but a terrific catch too by Jones extending himself full out. Dorsey adds the convert and Ottawa leads 20 to 10 with 55 seconds remaining in the first half. That's the sixth touchdown of the year for Stephon Jones. Terrific adjustment too. Now watch him move to the ball right here. He backs away. He doesn't keep going straight. The ball's thrown away from Rick Ryan, who's coming over. So Steve Goldman's looking for execution. Couldn't have been done any better than this. Well, and that's an almost impossible throw again for the cornerback to cover. Neil Major was with Stephen Jones. But when you lead a receiver like that and you take your receiver to the football, the corner really is helpless to do anything about it. Well, the throw takes the safety away out of the play, even though he's coming over. 
and it really allows your receiver, in this case Jones, to make his own adjustment to move away from the coverage. Remember, the advantage that Jones has is he knows where the ball is. He knows when it's coming, and he knows where to move to. Sixth touchdown for Jones, 13th touchdown pass of the year for Damon Allen. And the fans at Lansdowne are loving it. As the BC Lions bring back the kickoff, Sean Stewart, a linebacker with the ball, and he gets it out to the Lions. 47-48 yard line, still 51 seconds left in the half. Lots of time for Doug Flutie in the BC offense to get into scoring territory. Lions will begin from their 47 yard line. Willis and Tolbert wide left. Alexander and Christensen to the right. And Flutie straight into the pocket. Throws over the middle and Tolbert has it deflect off his shoulder pads and it's intercepted by the newcomer Patterson. Patterson's in deep coverage. You're going to see how deep he is in relation to where the ball is thrown. Tolbert's coming across the middle. See Patterson going downfield to cover Christensen? He's got his eye on the ball. The ball comes off Tolbert's shoulder, and Patterson makes a good reaction, comes back. And now gives Ottawa a chance to get more ball. And that's not excitement. That's trying to see where the ball's going. Well, football, to a large degree, is about making plays, and Emmanuel Tolbert did not make a very routine play. And now the Ottawa Rough Riders get a chance to put some more points on before the half is over. Damon Allen is all the way to the BC 49 yard line. The 27 yard run by Damon Allen as Ian Patterson celebrates his first CFL interception. Ian Patterson gives Damon Allen and the offense a chance to move and get in an opportunity to score points. And now we see Damon Allen moving like he would normally. I think now he's come to the point where he hasn't thought about his knee either. 30 seconds, the clock running. It's down to 25, and Reggie Barnes has a pass. Bounce off his chest and to the turf. 19 seconds remaining in the first half. Well, you know, quarterbacks are held accountable for so much on offense, Neil, but when you make a play like Flutie just made, picking out a receiver, they're in field goal range if Colbert catches the ball. Instead, it goes the other way, and I don't know. What can Flutie do? Absolutely nothing. And that's the frustrating thing about it. Helpless field. 19 seconds left in the half. Second and 10, Ottawa. Allen back to pass. They pick up the blitz pretty well, and they screen it to Conrad, and he has room. To the BC 29. A great call. BC's coming after Allen, and he uses that, that rush to his advantage to clear the one side. That is a 20-yard gain for the Ottawa Rough Riders. Time is whistled in. Now they're going to have to hurry, or they'll lose the chance to kick the field goal. And Damon Allen wisely calls timeout. Steve Goldman had to call timeout, in my opinion, at that point, because the clock was going to start as soon as play was whistled in. And they didn't, and it cost them a chance to move the ball further downfield. And they got away with it through Allen's alertness in calling the timeout. And now they can try the field goal. I'm sure now they take away any opportunity to get a touchdown. They're settling for a field goal. You're absolutely right. You come up to the ball, 11 seconds, your timeout. You throw the ball, if it's an incompletion, fine. Now you get a chance to kick your field goal. There's a chance in both ways, but you've got to give yourself the best chance. And Dean Dorsey will attempt a 36-yard field goal on what will be the final play of the first half unless we have a penalty. Damon Allen will put it down. And Dorsey puts it through, and the Ottawa Rough Riders have a 13-point lead at half down at Lansdowne Park. But can they play that 60 minutes that has been so elusive? We will find out. It's Ottawa 23, BC 10 at halftime. Five years. Lorenzo Graham. The 
Turning the kickoff and finding some good room on the right side, and he'll take it into Ottawa territory out of bounds at the Ryder 48-yard line, a 41-yard kickoff return by Lorenzo Graham. There's a comparison of the two quarterbacks in the first half. The numbers, very similar, except in that one category, interceptions, two thrown by Flutie, and Damon Allen, none, one of Flutie's, taken into the end zone by Greg Stuman for a touchdown. As you, I'm sorry, but as you said earlier, when a quarterback throws a bad ball and it's intercepted, there's no one to blame but himself. But when they're dropped and tipped and catchable, then they're intercepted. That's real frustration. Flutie stays on at quarterback. Joe Paul Paul the back up. Flutie throws on first down for Willis, and it's tipped away by Daryl Hopper, who had good coverage on Larry Willis. You have to be resilient as a quarterback, not only from the press and what they write about you, but physically. And I'm sure that shot could have been worse if he had still had the ball in his hand. Stuman backed off just a little bit. Flutie is a very small man at 5'9", about 175. He's strong for his size, but, boy, that was a punishing shot by Stuman. Second and 10 lines at the Ottawa 48-yard line. Flutie, lots of time, and has a man open in the middle. It's a first down to Ray Alexander, who's to the Ottawa 25-yard line. Nice job by Flutie of standing in and putting it on the money. Ray Alexander, our halftime feature. Some confusion downfield. Patrick Wayne and Ian Patterson. Two guys go deep with Christensen underneath. Alexander's wide open. Wide right again, Doug Flutie from the 25-yard line. Pump fakes and then puts it up deep for Alexander, who can't get to it. Again, pressure came on Doug Flutie. Greg Stuman got through there, and Flutie was not able to properly deliver the ball. You have to be able to step up and at least deliver a blow. If you're beaten after that, that's fine. But the block at the top of the screen on Stuman barely touched him and allowed him to only change direction and slow down just a little bit. You have to be able to stick your helmet in there, and if you miss him, miss him to the outside. Don't let someone beat you to the inside. It's a shorter path to the quarterback. Greg Stuman, one of the free agents signed by Ottawa. He's had an outstanding year. Second and 10 lines. Ottawa 25-yard line. Flutie won't run. He throws, but the pass high intended for Emmanuel Colbert, who found an opening there, but Doug Flutie threw it a little bit high. He's done that a couple times this evening when he's broken. Almost looks like he's going to run just to get to the line of scrimmage. He pops it. And it almost seems like his momentum and the stride that he's in just puts a little bit too much zip on the ball. Lou Pisaglia has kicked a 13-yard field goal. That's Joe Pow Pow, the backup BC quarterback tonight. With the jacket still on, football tucked under his arm. Plays on his wrist. He's ready. If he gets the call, Flutie will hold for Pisaglia, 32-yard try. And it is good, and that makes it 23-13. Ottawa very early in the second half. Rick Ryan will kick off for BC after Lucas Egley, a 32-yard field goal, cut Ottawa's lead at 10 points. Ryan's kick bounces and is fielded by Stacy Dossie, who burst through the right side and is out of bounds at the 50-yard line. Good return by Dossie. Gives Damon Allen the luxury and the rest of the Ryder offense to start at a good position. One other game in the CFL tonight. That's in Winnipeg. The Blue Bombers leading Calgary 13-2. Rick House, a touchdown. Trevor Kenner, two field goals. And the Stampeders have a couple of single points. That game being played in Winnipeg. The teams with the best records in the CFL. Here are the teams with the worst looking to improve on their marks. Ottawa and BC, Damon Allen to Reggie Barnes coming out of the backfield. And he couldn't squeeze the ball. Tony Visco was waiting for him and put the wrap on him anyway. That's a how do you do. They haven't tried to run Reggie Barnes, but they've thrown the ball to him out of the backfield. And if linebackers don't come, there are different areas that they can release. One is swing to the outside. The other is release up the seam and try to find the gap in between the middle linebacker and the outside. And Visco laid the hammer on Barnes. 
Fisco has really become an accomplished linebacker this season, joining Landry and Plus to give the Lions quite a trio. Second and 10 Ottawa from the Ryder 50. Allen wanted to throw quickly and then dumps it out to Barnes on the left side. Now Damon Allen had the whole right side of the field to take off on, but again, I think we see that he is not the normal Damon Allen in that he is playing with a knee that's not totally sound. I also think the read, the progression of what he's supposed to look to downfield takes him from where he looked to quickly, as you said, to the left side of the field and away from the opening. And I, I'm a little bit surprised, though it's just started the second half, that Ottawa doesn't try to get that running game with Barnes going. Terry Baker will punt. On third and ten, low snap. He brings it up and gets a good kick away. Kennard Martin at the 15-yard line drops the ball, gets it back at the 11, and then is down at the 10-yard line. Excellent coverage by the Ottawa Rough Riders. You're watching the Motion Canadian Football Network. beaten the BC Lions since 1983. 13 straight losses, but they have a 10-point lead here three minutes into the second half. The third quarter at Lansdowne Park. Doug Cooley and the Lions after a 45-yard Baker punt. Start from their 10-yard line on the pass. Larry Willis could not catch up to. And Bob, you know there's not a lot of mysteries to the game of football. And Steve Goldman knows if you can do one thing, limit your turnovers and take advantage of other turnovers that you can have some success. And that's what happened with the Riders tonight as far as taking advantage of opportunities, gi opportunities given to them. 13 points for Ottawa. Three BC turnovers. It's from the 12. The Lions are second and 10. Flutie in the pocket. Gets away from Kropke. He's to the 15. He'll try to take it wide. Boy, he can run. But Hopper runs him down up at the 18-yard line. Flutie gains seven or eight. Hopper showed outstanding speed to track Doug Flutie. When you have to change, chase a quarterback around, the one thing you do is you change direction and you become vulnerable because you're looking at the quarterback. That wasn't a bad hit, but check this hit out. Talk about lifting someone off the ground. Alexander just lays the leather oh, to Stuman. And boy, he ripped him. Alexander's a big guy at 6'4", but he gives away around 20 pounds, 30 pounds to Stuman. Yeah, but it all becomes very equal <laughs> when one person, Stuman, doesn't know Alexander's coming. And Alexander's coming back from upfield, so he's got some pace on his stride. A great equalizer, the blind side hit, a very legal hit by Alexander. The Lions in a putting situation. And Greg Stuman was hurt on that play, and that's no surprise. Alexander giving him some encouragement knowing that Stuman was helpless on that play, but in Alexander's position, it's a hit you have to deliver. Oh, not only do you have to, you want to. I mean, those are, those are hits people dream of. So Pasagli on third and four will punt. Good kick. Very little win factor in this game. Stacy Dossie will try to go wide. Flag down as Dossie gets it back near center field. A 47-yard punt by Pasagli. And Dossie brought it back seven yards, but he may lose that, depending on what the penalty is. And the penalty is against Ottawa. Illegal block. Ottawa number 43. First down. Steve Goldman, the coach of the Ottawa Rough Riders, tells us why Damon Allen is the quarterback he turns to. First and the best quarterback we have. That's why he's back here. He gives us the best quarterback he has since he's been here. And Kenny did a good job in the short time that he's played. He hadn't struggled out there at Calgary. He didn't have a very good night. He'd be the first one to tell you. I don't think Kenny, uh, any less of Kenny, I think he tried to win the ball game. He just didn't have a very good night. And I think that uh, Tony Kimbrough deserves an opportunity if the time occurs. There's often talk, and there has been over the last few weeks, but I agree with Steve Goldman. Damon Allen is the quarterback of this football team. 
and his talents will lead them to more victories than they've had thus far. Reggie Barnes' talents will help in that regard. He carried for 17 yards on first down, and now David Williams catches a pass and steps out of bounds at the BC 44-yard line after picking up nine yards. Very simple, go down and stop. When the coverage is that far off, nothing magical about it. What I'm waiting for is for him to stretch one out. David Williams, the outstanding player in the CFL in 1988. Second down and a yard, Ottawa, will they throw? Or will they play conservative? They're going to throw, and Allen puts it up long for Stefan Jones, and he has a touchdown! to have a choice little play action and he's going downtown he looks to left to David Williams he could go either way but I think he makes a choice to Jones because he's got a good stride and a half over Chris Major second touchdown of the night and seventh of the season for Stefan Jones David Allen now has 14 touchdown passes this year just had that feeling didn't you See that, and I do too. Dorsey has the convert, and Ottawa leads by 30 to 13 with nine minutes and 51 seconds left in the third quarter. The short yardage sort of play like you're going to block, but not this time. I don't think there's any question. The one thing is, Stefan Jones had Chris Major looking to the outside, so when Jones makes that cut, Major has to gather himself around and try to keep up, keep up to Stefan Jones. And that's not an easy task. And the long, the long throw by a quarterback is the most difficult throw. And Allen has twice tonight been letter perfect, and it's resulted in two Stefan Jones touchdowns. Couldn't ask for any better. David Allen has had a pretty good year for Ottawa, the Riders. Have lost a number of games in some weird and wild ways. David Allen has been the target of the Bluebirds from time to time at Lansdowne Park, who are frustrated by the Riders' one and six record. But Allen has looked very, very sharp tonight. And we start to wonder a little bit if the BC Lions will suffer from fatigue in the second half. And we have a reason for wondering that, which we'll tell you about in a minute, as Kennard Martin looks like he has lots of energy on this kick return. And he's up to the 50 of the BC Lions. The Lions left Vancouver on Sunday night at 11 o'clock and got to Ottawa Monday around 10 o'clock in the morning. They took the red eye, the overnight flight to get here. Larry Q. Harich felt he had Nielsen very valid reasons for doing it that way. Well, he felt the players had a chance to rest all day, and you have to consider also the three-hour time change. And I'm not sure if the impact of not having a great rest one night hits you the next day or the day after, because the day after is the game. Flutie from the 50. And he's sacked by Stuman and fumbles the ball. And Chris Skinner recovers, but the Lions will lose eight yards. The last time we saw Stuman, he was on his back. He was the recipient of a pretty good wallop by Ray Alexander. But bounce back, he does. See, he takes the inside. A short route to the quarterback. Makes the sack, and that right arm comes around to strip your quarterback. Skinner doesn't play around, doesn't try to pick it up, just sort of smother it. You got to protect your quarterback inside out. Second down and 18. From the 42, Flutie, big trouble, can't get away. You've got Patrick Wayne, you've got McGowan, and you've got Flagle, 14, the safety up. Flutie wants to go to his left, McGowan turns him one way, Kropke's in there, really makes the sack, and then Patrick Wayne just finishes it off. 
on top of which, as I said, Flago was up tight. He was coming. The tempo has been set right now by the rider defense. Well, and the BC Lions better do something quickly to change the tide or they're going to be in bigger trouble than they are already, trailing 30 to 13 as Pasaglia punts to Dossi. He's up to the 52, and there is a flag on the play. We have 8.15 left in the third quarter at Lansdowne Park. Greg Stuman has an Ottawa touchdown on an interception return and has been a key factor all night with pressure on BC quarterback Doug Flutie. Ottawa leading by 17 in good field position, first and 10 at their 52-yard line. Allen hands to Reggie Barnes, left side. And he's to center field again of three. There is a flag as Joe Pow Pow loosens up at the BC bench. Well, I'm not sure if he'll go in. The next series, the Lions have the ball, but I would bet if Flutie gets one more chance, it might be his last. Offside, BC 92. First down and five. Visco was offside as Doug Flutie is the man who's playing catch with Joe Pow Pow. This is a situation for the riders that, in my estimation, would be an ideal time to do a little play action and go deep again. First and five, Allen wants to throw. Will instead take off with it and get out of bounds at the BC 51 yard line. That'll be a gain of two, three yards for Damon Allen and leave the Riders in a second down in three situations. Go, go, three. Go, go, go. Goldman not wearing the headset gives him an opportunity. And I think it's an ideal situation for a coach not to have to worry about sending plays and leave that to the offensive coordinators and that, those people. Concentrate on the football game. What are you going to have to do next? Make those decisions that influence and will affect the team as a whole. Second and three, Riders, BC 51, the toss to Reggie Barnes, left side, stopped in the backfield. Up there to make the initial contact was Robert Holland, the defensive back who's playing his first game with BC. Holland's been in camp for six weeks, but this is really his first chance in game exposure. Quick sweep, Conrad's gonna lead, going to the outside, but Holland gets up very close to the line of scrimmage and really just knifes inside to take away any possibility of a block. 24-year-old from Sacramento State, Robert Holland. Third down and six, Ottawa from the BC 54-yard line. 7.15 left third quarter. And Terry Baker will punt. Baker trying to kick it out of bounds. Norm Jefferson, though, grabs it at the 12 of the BC Lions, and he steps up at the 17-yard line. And with the score, Ottawa 30 and the BC Lions 13 at Lansdowne Park in Ottawa. Let's pause 10 seconds for stations from coast to coast to identify themselves. You're watching Molson Canadian Football Network. 6.58 left third quarter. Doug Flutie stays on at quarterback for the BC Lions, down by 17 to the Ottawa Rough Riders. First and 10 from the 17-yard line. And Flutie is dropped before he can get it away. Lloyd Lewis made the sack. When your deep defensive front four are getting pressure, it's nice to see people take turns. We've seen Kropke, Stuman, Kulka, now Lloyd Lewis. And that's what you want, quite simply, four people putting enough pressure on your quarterback to force your quarterback to step up or throw a bad ball. Riders have also forced BC Neal away from their running game. And they're just teeing off and going after Flutie. Second down and 14. Flutie throws a screen pass to Lorenzo Graham. And he's up to the 20 with it for a gain of seven. But it'll be third and long and the Lions will have to punt. I think another good sign for a defense, especially if you're a defensive coach, is to see the amount of players that end up around the ball when the tackle's made. You know, three, four guys, guys coming to the football. They don't always have to be involved in the tackle, but they're making a heck of an effort, heck of an effort to get there. 
And that's just hustle, and that's what you want from your defense. The fans in Lansdowne who have suffered like fans nowhere in North America the last few years are enjoying this as Pisaglia rushed as the punt go a little bit to his left. He got a pretty good bounce out of it, though, and they'll mark it out of bounds in Ottawa territory at the rough right here. 50 yard line. It's a 40 yard kick, but Pisaglia had all sorts of heat. And the pressure comes around where the ball is going to be dropped, not in the direction of the kicker. See, everyone's going to where that ball should be coming off of Pisaglia's foot. Then, therefore, there's no chance of roughing the kicker unless you're blocked into it. Five and a half minutes left, third quarter, 17 point Ottawa lead. Riders from there, 50. Allen throws wide open as David Williams. And he'll get it into the BC 48 yard line. And then he slammed into the cement wall by Henry. And a fight starts. That was a vicious hit by Mike Henry on David Williams. And there will be ejections here. At least one player for certain. question for one, one player should be gone it should be Henry. The, the stands are very close to the field here at Lansdowne. Watch the move on Jefferson. Jefferson's still going downfield. See him go out of your screen. Williams just does a lazy out and then tries to stay in play because he can make one of these and turn it into a big one. He's out of bounds. That's unnecessary. Well that's dangerous. And then uh, the swinging started. Williams throwing punches and of course that's not the wisest thing for him to do. He's liable to break a hand. There's Mike Henry, the rookie defensive end of the BC Lions, and David Williams. And it looks like maybe they've both been ejected from the game. Well, that is one thing you mentioned. <laughs> there is no sense in throwing punches at a guy that's wearing a cage, especially if you're going to try to hit him in the face, especially if you're David Williams. He doesn't wear padding on his hands. All he has is gloves. As this the discussion continues on what action will be taken for that outbreak on the sideline. We have a disqualification, number 96 BC. A disqualification, number four Ottawa. Major foul, unnecessary roughness, number 96 BC. First down Ottawa. Goldman asks a legitimate question when he asks why David Williams got thrown out, but you're not supposed to retaliate, and of course he did take a swing at Mike Henry, so perhaps he deserves to get thrown out too. Well, I'll tell you what, though, you can get someone to throw you into a wall, or any type of action like that. If you don't retaliate, there's something wrong with you in the first place. I agree with Henry being thrown out. That was unnecessary. But I agree with Goldman. I question it too. And I'm not sure why Henry would be as upset as he is unless he's mad at himself. Because surely he didn't think he... That was a dangerous, dangerous play. That ejection to Williams brings Stacy Dossie in 84 to the outside. The, around the perimeter of the city. I'm sure the storm has moved off. But there's uh, still some excitement <laughs> with those gods. I don't know if I'd want to be flying in to Ottawa International Airport. I think I might want to maybe redirect me to Toronto, Buffalo, or Chicago. I'm not sure how you're ever sure that lightning has left the area. But we are back underway, and the kickoff after an Ottawa touchdown, Lorenzo Graham brings it back to the 46, maybe the 47-yard line of the BC Lions, who face a rather monumental deficit 24 points the Ottawa Rough Riders lead and again we recap the scoring if you missed it Dean Dorsey began the game with a field goal Kennard Martin a touchdown by the BC Lions to put them in front that Ottawa went back ahead Greg Stuman an interception return then another Dorsey field goal Pasaglia with a field goal for BC Damon Allen a touchdown pass to Jones another Dorsey field goal gave Ottawa 23 10 late at halftime and they've expanded on it as Joe Pow Pow comes into quarterback the BC Lions and he passes complete to Chris Skinner for a gain of five Joe Papa replacing Doug Flutie Pisagli after Dean Dorsey kicked that field goal in the last play of the first half Pisagli answered with a BC field goal early in the third quarter 
But Damon Allen threw two more touchdown passes, one to Stephen Jones and the other to Stacy Dossie. And Ottawa leads 37 to 13. Pow Pow, second and five, and he throws completed center field. Lorenzo Graham stopped just a little bit short of a first down, it appeared, by McGowan. Well, there is a change at quarterback, but one thing that hasn't changed is the pressure on the quarterback. Ottawa continues to bring some heat. And this time it's right up the middle. See, almost like a soft sack. Joe Pow Pow having quite a year and is quite a story as they measure for the first down. See, the rain is still very much a factor. It lands down. All the lightning has moved away. Joe Pow Pow coming into the game in difficult playing conditions. Not a lot of wind with this rain, but what wind there is is in the face of the BC Lions. Three and a half minutes left now in the third quarter. We had a lengthy weather delay here at Lansdowne. Third and inches. Pow Pow keeps off the right side and gets the first down to the 54 yard line, maybe the 53. Bruce Holmes says there was a turnover. Well, they're still peeling people up. The ball was turned over. Here's Pow Pow down. There's the hit right there by McGowan. That hit knocks the ball out. And it is Ottawa football as they got a helmet on the ball as Pow Pow went into the line. Somebody got a helmet on the ball. It came loose. And after the officials took a good long look at it, they have signaled it is Ottawa ball. Good stalemate right along the line of scrimmage. McGowan came in from the outside as we saw it, just put his helmet right where the ball was. And then it was a scramble, and the scramble ends up this way. Ottawa first down. Four turnovers for BC, only one for Ottawa. Damon Allen is Stacy Dossie, and he has a first down into the BC 41-yard line. Dossie replacing David Williams, who was thrown out of the game, along with Mike Henry of the BC Lions, as they got into an altercation earlier in this third quarter. the Lions were minus 10 in that takeaway giveaway ratio the turnover ratio coming into the game they're now minus 13 worst in the league and boy that's a killer as Damon Allen again picks out Ellingson down to the BC 28 for a first down Allen has looked very calm cool and collected tonight hasn't he? Well I think it's a matter of confidence and when you get in a swing of the swing of things I think like Allen is he's throwing the ball well he sets himself up to throw the ball well he, you know he's getting himself and giving himself the best chance to complete passes and be successful. Allen hands off to Reggie Barnes and he's grabbed by Willie Pless. Barnes will have no gain if he's lucky. Also point out that Reddick is out of slot back. And number 16, Dan Johnston is in. Backing core of the Lions, Visco, Pless, and Landry, an outstanding one. A minute 50 left in the third quarter. Second and 11. Ottawa from the BC, 28 and a half. Boy, Allen's a great protection all night. There's a flag now. There may have been a hold on that. And that's why he got the protection as he dives ahead of the BC 21 yard line for a gain of eight. But it's holding against the Ottawa Rough Riders. Well, even before that flag was thrown for holding, the offensive line was doing a whale of a job creating that pocket for Damon Allen. He sat back there and had a good view of the defense. And the Lions, I believe, have decided to accept the penalty. Holding. Number 25. Second down repeat. It's David Conrad again. Lines up in the backfield with Reggie Barnes, the fullback called for holding so it'll be second down and 20 yards to go back from the BC 39 the penalty pushes Ottawa to really the fringe of scoring territory in terms of a field goal attempt and the Lions are not wanting to surrender any more points down by 24 already Allen throws and it's no good intended for Johnston and a late flag comes down a very very late flag and it'll be pass interference against BC. 
forward pass interference. That's Remy Touchdown. Trudell who's called for interference. I think it's a good call. Trudell gives him a shot before the ball gets there. It's a hot pass. Damon Allen reads the play. He feels the pressure. He gets to throw to the inside. There's no one in the middle to really get in the way of that pass. Trudell just bumps him. Norm Jefferson is out of the game. Holland has moved to corner. And Trudell in a defensive halfback as Damon Allen puts it up long in the end zone. And Johnston can't quite make the catch. He was there. And a late play comes down again. Allen again throwing a beautiful pass. Johnston not quite able to grab it. Well, the flag came late. Uh, The ball was in the right spot. The only thing I can think of is interference. Objectionable conduct. DC number eight. First down. Rick Ryan is called for objectionable conduct. Apparently, he stepped on Johnston's back. We can look at it here. That's the call. Certainly not a malicious move by Ryan. On the other hand, no need for him to do that. Damon Allen in the end zone for Dossie, nearly intercepted by Robert Holland. 35 seconds left in the third quarter. Ottawa leading 37 to 13. Two receivers in the same spot. Barnes is going up the sidelines. You'll see Dossie coming towards the sideline. There's Dossie making the break. There's Barnes continuing up. Heck of a jump by number 34, Robert Hall, to break that up. But you get two people into the same area, as far as receivers, all you do is draw a crowd for coverage. Dossie comes wide left with Dan Johnston. Jones and Reddick's foot to the right. Allen throws. There's a flag down. The pass is incomplete. But there is another penalty flag. 18 seconds left in the third quarter. Procedure against the Ottawa Rough Riders. Steve Goldman will send out his field goal unit, presuming that the BC Lions decline the penalty. Procedure, Ottawa Third down. I think one concern for Steve Goldman and his coaching staff right now is that his riders have played with intensity and executed well. You can't lose that intensity. You have to have the ability and get used to playing for four quarters. Regardless of how much you are ahead of the opposing team, you have to keep that same kind of heat on and get used to doing it. And Dorsey kicks the field goal. We would like the stations on the network to stand by for Commercial break 16. We have one minute left in the third quarter. One second, pardon me, left in the third quarter at Lansdowne Park in Ottawa. And the Rough Riders have increased their lead to 27 points. It is now 40 to 13. Ottawa leading the BC Lions. Both teams trying to climb up from the basement of the East and West Divisions, respectively. Objectionable conduct. DC number 39. Doug Landry penalized on the field goal by Dorsey, which will give Ottawa a more favorable position to kick off from as the Lions getting very frustrated and taking some unnecessary penalties. That's the 14th penalty that BC has taken in the game tonight. And Landry is more than a little bit upset. And I imagine Larry Q. Hurts is as well. Dorsey will kick off from his 45-yard line. And he really gets into this one. Martin has it go over his head. And he'll pick it up and concede a single point. And the third quarter will end with Ottawa leading by 28 to 41 to 13. Thank you.
We're just about to start the fourth quarter at Lansdowne Park in Ottawa. Bob Irving and Neil Lumsden, the Ottawa Rough Riders leading BC 41-13. You may be wondering why the game is two minutes and 50, two hours and 50 minutes old, and why we're just starting the fourth quarter. As Pow Pow has a pass dropped by Alexander. Well, we had about a 20-minute weather delay in the third quarter because of a severe electrical storm with lightning and hail. And the BC Lions have not executed well on offense tonight and that was an example of some of the things that have plagued them tonight and really Neil have played a big role even though it's a 28 point lead for the Ottawa Rough Riders two or three little things have just killed the BC line things like drives the turnovers that Ottawa has been able to turn into touchdowns those little things at the time turn into big things Alexander catches this one for a 12 yard gain. The play that sticks out was late in the second quarter when Doug Flutie threw to Emmanuel Tolbert at the Ottawa 45 yard line. A perfect pass, bounced off his shoulder pads, and was intercepted. Ottawa got a late field goal and had a 13 point lead instead of maybe a seven point lead at halftime. Pow Pow throws and completes another one to Ray Alexander, but there is a flag down on the other side of the field where Willis and Hopper were going against one another. 55 yards away from the play as you said. Willis and Hopper I guess we're taking exchanging blows. And we're caught. Now I can't help but think that last year the time that Joe Popov spent as a coach with the BC Lions. Illegal contact on a receiver number 28 Ottawa. Well, he's declined first down. Helped him as a quarterback. I mean, he in his wildest dreams probably didn't guess he'd line up by the center again and take another snap. But he has, and he's played very well. And I think that last year, maybe watching and helping coach, the old dog can still learn a few tricks. Joe Pow Pow is a problem with that exchange from center Ian Sinclair. And does well to hang out of the ball. And the Lions lose about five yards or more. Could be a combination of things. Pow Pow starting out a little bit early. Sinclair bringing the ball straight back and not up where Pow Pow's hands are. Second down and 17. As the Lions go without a huddle and Pow Pow puts it up long. Christensen makes an outstanding catch in traffic down at the Ottawa 27 yard line. Traffic is an understatement. You have Patrick Wayne, the linebacker, dropping back deep. You have 18 Patterson, 31 White. They're all in the area. Look at this catch. What a heck of a catch. Not a bad throw by Joe either. Pow Pow it puts it in there. It looks better than when it was caught. Yeah, that's right. Larry Willis was way offside. Pow Pow throws. And they whistle the play down before it's completed. Larry Q. Harch looking on. I don't know if bewilderment is the right comment. I'm obviously very disappointed in the performance of his team tonight. Procedure. BC number one. First down and 15. Well, it's had about a two-step start before the ball was snapped. So it'll be first and 15. The Lions going without a huddle. They're way behind 41-13 and wanting to move it down the field as quickly as they can, obviously. Again, drops the snap from center, and who got it this time? Ottawa, that's the fifth BC turnover. There's no way to describe it. Mistakes and more mistakes. Olsen and the Canadian Football Network, proud to bring you the best of the CFL. Lions have just turned the ball over for the fifth time in the game. Ottawa's only turned it over once, and that's been a big story here as the Riders have a 28 point lead. Ottawa taking over at their 33 yard line. Reggie Barnes carrying on first down and does a nice job of hesitating and then popping through the hole for a run of close to 10 yards. We come to get you. We come to get you right now. Starting the day. Fumbled snap from center again. See Holmes, he comes up to take on Ian Sinclair. He sees a little jewel on the ground and ignores the block and gets the ball. 
One thing we haven't pointed out, we told you the adjustment that Ottawa had to make with David Williams being kicked out of the game. Mike Henry, number 96, was the BC Lion who had to leave the field, and he was replaced by number 35, Paul Wetmore. First down for the Ottawa Rough Riders. One of the games tonight in the CFL, it is in Winnipeg. The Blue Bombers lead Calgary 19 to 12 in the third quarter. The teams are the best records in the league. Rick House has the Winnipeg touchdown. Trevor Kenner, four field goals. Daryl Wallace has scored a touchdown for Calgary. And Mark McLaughlin is a field goal. And the Stamps also have a couple of singles. Damon Allen, three touchdown passes for Ottawa. And he throws complete to Stacey Dossie. And he's up to center field and knocked out of bounds, but has a gain of 12 yards as the Ottawa Rough Riders continue to work the BC secondary. A short drop by Damon Allen. There's the read. He looks to the front side, then comes back to Dossie. Dossie's receiving a great deal of respect from Jefferson. Way too much. Dossie comes wide left. And Stephen Jones splits to the right. David Allen throws and Landry intercepts at the 44-yard line. Doug Landry is back to the 53 of the BC Lions. That's the second turnover forced by the BC team in defense, but they're still three behind Ottawa in, the, in that category. Mir, the quarterback, he steps up quickly to take the takes the fake of the play action and then drops back and really just mirrors the image and the movement of Damon Allen. Allen was sprinting. Landry was sprinting to that side and just stepped in front. Doug Tank Landry playing in his fourth game of the season. And he is just an instinctive, natural, talented linebacker. Joe Pow Pow swings the ball out to Lorenzo Graham. And he gets it all the way to the Ottawa 46-yard line, and that's just good running by Graham that resulted in that first down. Well, I'd like to use Graham out of the backfield into this game. He had 25 catches. And he was an important and has been an important part of the offense, but up until this point, they really haven't utilized him out of that swing position. Lions again go without a huddle, and the pass intended for Willis. And Derek White, the cornerback, had good coverage as Pow Pow throws his arms up in resignation. And Doug Flutie looks on. Flutie's mother is here tonight watching the game and some other friends. Doug Flutie, 12 out of 26, 181, two interceptions. One of those interceptions taken 21 yards for a touchdown by Greg Stuman. 40 left in the fourth quarter. Ottawa leading 41-13. Lions second and 10. Pop out of Willis wide open. Larry Willis has a touchdown. Good throw by Pop out. Willis cleanly beats Daryl Hopper. That was the concern. And I guess really the reason that he was released earlier on in the week, because in situations like this, he has given up the big play too many times. Willis is pulling away from Hopper. Pow Pow leading him out there beautifully. A 45-yard touchdown strike. Lou Pasaglia will attempt to convert. And if it's good, it will cut the lead to 41 to 20. And it is, so it's a 21-point Ottawa advantage with 10 and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. Thrown out of the game in the third quarter after belting David Williams into the wall out of bounds. Williams also thrown out. BC kicking off after a touchdown and good coverage by Christensen stops Jones. And the Riders will start fairly deep. Christensen starts at that slot back, but has been very valuable in special teams. And the numbers that the coaches compile prove that. He's got more tackles, and he just simply avoids Ellingson. Another slot back. we got the battle of the slot backs here on special teams on CFN. On the Canadian Football Network. Calgary Stampeders have taken the lead at Winnipeg Stadium. The Bombers. Turned the ball over three times in a row. Danny Barrett has thrown a touchdown pass to Crawford. And Calgary in front of Winnipeg, 
Ottawa from their 22-yard line. Five minutes left in that game. And Winnipeg is Reggie Barnes finds a big hole right up the middle and rambles for 21 yards. Five minutes left in the third quarter at Winnipeg. I correct myself. This is what the Riders want to do, establish that running game. Get Barnes back on track. The way he was running before he injured that knee. Now, a lot of people don't know that he's also got a broken bone in his right hand. And he's carried nine times tonight for 47 yards, and he has the ball again, bounces off the first hit, and is able to struggle ahead of the 43-yard line of Ottawa for a gain of a couple more. And, of course, Doug Landry was in on the tackle. No surprise, Landry with each game will get stronger. He just has to beat off Brian Illebrun, who gets in his face long enough. A bit of a stalemate there, but Landry does get in on the tackle. Ottawa second down and eight from there, 43. Allen sprinting left, turning it back upfield, and is down at the 46-yard line. Wetmore made the tackle, Paul Wetmore. Acadia graduate, second round draft pick of the BC Lions in his second year with them. And the Lions will get the ball back with nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. Ottawa with a 21 point lead. But when you're one and six and you have lost games in the variety of ways that Ottawa has lost them, I would venture to guess that Steve Goldman doesn't feel as comfortable as most coaches would with a 21 point lead with nine and a half minutes left. There isn't a lead big enough. <laughs> Baker, good kick. Kennard Martin on the return. And good punt coverage, which has been the case all night. He's down at the 26 yard line. Damon Allen and Stephon Jones have been major architects in Ottawa's big lead. Allen, three touchdown passes. Jones, two of them, four catches. The Riders, 16 points as a result of turnovers. And we had a 20-minute delay in the game because of rain and lightning. Joe Pow Pow at quarterback. Nice job of getting it to Christensen up at the 33-yard line. And a gain of six or seven for BC. Eight minutes, 17 seconds left. Fourth quarter, Ottawa up 41 to 20. Pow Pow continues not to waste any time. Gets everyone up in the line of scrimmage and quite simply calls the play from there. They need all the time they can get. Second and three. Pow Pow. Dumps it off to the 35-yard line. Good defense by Ottawa. Bruce Holmes, the middle linebacker, and he stops at a yard short of a first down. And the Lions in the situation are going to really have to gamble. I think Holmes has been a real spark plug, not only with his attitude, but with his play coming into this game. One sack, 50 tackles, a bunch of knockdowns. And you need that type of player in your middle. And you have to have a guy in defense that's going to put people on their back. And since he's come here last year, he's done exactly that. Lions will have to hurry or they'll get called for delay a game. Pow Pow will pass on third and one. Complete to Willis. There's a flag down. Larry Willis is caught at the 54. There's another flag probably for face guarding. Not sure about the first one. The Lions get the first down and then some. But we'll see about the penalties. What's the fucking flag on us for? Procedure against BC and face masking against the Ottawa Rough Riders. going to come back against the Lions. Procedure. No end, British Columbia. On this major foul, face mask, Ottawa 76, 10-yard difference, first down. So they assess all that from the point of scrimmage, and it gives BC a first down at their 45-yard line. The Stampeders are now ahead by... 10 points on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in the fourth quarter, 29 to 19. Danny Barrett has thrown a touchdown pass to Crawford. 57 yarder as the Stampeders look to further up their record. And the pass for Colbert, who's wide open, just out of bounds. 
That play makes me think once again about Steve Goldman saying at times in the game, we lose concentration. See the three secondary people right there? Someone's obviously made a mistake in coverage, but there is no reason. The communication should be there. The call should be there for everyone. Someone's just blowing an assignment. And those things you've got to stop, because if that's a caught ball in a close football game, that's really what has been bearing the Ottawa Rough Riders game in and game out. Second and 10, Pow Pow throws, and it's knocked down just beyond the line of scrimmage. You know, on that last play, Colbert obviously lost track of where he was because he could have stopped up inbounds and caught that ball very easily, but it uh, was just a, a foot out of bounds. Coverage was good enough even past McGowan. I think if McGowan hadn't had his hand on the ball, it wouldn't have been complete. 6.50 left, fourth quarter. 41 to 20, Ottawa. It'll be third and 10, Lions. From there, 45. Wow, foul to Larry Willis. He's open at the 50 of Ottawa. Gets away. Willis on his feet and down finally at the 47-yard line. The Lions convert the third down and get a first down. Willis many times has caught a ball. See him get away from the push from Ian Patterson and then turned into something big. He's going to take this shot. One step and then back inside. Eludes the rush, but good persistence by Derek White. Cut five for 118 yards tonight as Willis Pow Pow throws and Willis won't catch this one. And White really got a chance to put one on Larry Ray Willis. And a flag comes down. And that may be against Willis for the retaliation or against Holmes, perhaps, who got involved late. I think you're right. I think it's against Willis. Objectionable conduct. Ottawa number 31. First down. Well, the hit itself looked pretty fair and pretty darn tough. If the call is made on the hit, that's a bad call. I mean, it, it is football. The, the call wasn't on the hit. I don't think Naylor was objectionable conduct. So something occurred. White did or said something. I don't know after the fact that the referee didn't like. As Chris Skinner takes a first down pass from Joe Pow Pow and advances it five or six yards. But it was Willis who came up off the ground and stuck his face into Derek White. So I don't know. 35 left fourth quarter. Lions moving. They're down by 21 points in their second down and four at the Ottawa 31. Pow Pow pumps once, gets it back and throws complete down to the 12 yard line. Christensen on the receiving end. 520 left in the clock running as Steve Goldman wishes the clock would run just a little bit faster and wishes his defense would come up and play a little bit tougher. The Lions go from that dawn formation no running backs three receivers to either side and they stack two of them there was a penalty on that last play and it's against bc ineligible receiver bc number 83 second down repeated christensen wasn't eligible on that pass so they'll march it back look at the penalties the Lions, now this is uncharacteristic for them. They had the fewest penalties in the CFL this season starting tonight's game, but that has changed. Second and 14 from the Ottawa 41. 41 to 20, Ottawa leading. How about Lorenzo Graham? And he may score. Touchdown. 452 left. And a convert gets. BC to within 14 points. Remember we said a little while ago there aren't enough points to, to get Steve Goldman to relax. This is the reason why. Just right up the seam. Gets behind Holmes and Graham just simply turns it on and continues on his path that took him right behind the middle linebacker. And give Joe Popow credit. He's thrown the ball on a number of occasions. When the coverage has been there or someone has been in front of a potential receiver and put the ball in the right spot. A 41 yard touchdown pass. How about Lorenzo Graham? And it's now 41 27. 
Ottawa leading the BC Lions with four minutes and 52 seconds left in the fourth quarter. It's Steve Goldman. I wonder what's running through his mind. Don't tell me. <laughs> Don't tell me we could possibly lose no. this game. I'll tell you what, it just, you're right. I mean, it's, it's not a funny situation. It's serious because Steve Goldman has seen it slip away so many times. And it's all controllable. You allow them to get back in the game, good place, and an occasional mistake. And that's what you have to eliminate. Well, select and talk to a Molson MVP after this evening's game, which was delayed 20 minutes by lightning and heavy rain in the third quarter. You know, now, Bob, if Ottawa gets this ball, this is the time that their offense has to bear down and put a drive together, regardless of whether they score or not, but to eat that clock. Take some time away from the BC Lions. Ryan kicking off. Stacey Dossie from the 11. And Dossie returns it up to the 48 yard line. Good return by Dossie. 445 left. Here in the fourth quarter at Lansdowne Park. In Winnipeg, meanwhile, Danny McManus is throwing a touchdown pass to Gene Murphy. 27 yarder, and the Blue Bombers are within three of the Stampeders. They have a good one going at Winnipeg Stadium. 13 minutes left in the fourth quarter there. Here we have 4.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Ottawa leading 41-27. Riders haven't beaten the BC Lions since 1983. They've lost 13 straight to them since then. Damon Allen has had quite a night to spark the Ottawa offense. And he lets the time run down. Veteran like Allen will work the clock cleverly. Reggie Barnes carrying, breaks the tackle, fumbles. That's the thing Ottawa could not afford, and the BC Lions have the ball at center field. 4.24 left in the game. Well, big plays come from big people, both on offense and defense. And you learn to expect them from certain people. And Landry, you see him, no one's out on him. He, he, over, he pursues past the ball. Simply makes the tackle and the ball pops out of Barnes' hand. Landry didn't put a, an arm on it or even take a swipe at it. He just secured the tackle and the ball came loose. Well, the turnover comparison gets a little closer. That is the third now for the Ottawa Rough Riders. It's two running backs, both Graham and Skinner, step to him. That allows Holmes to come around a little bit further and jump up and get in the face of Pow Pow and knock the ball. Well, the BC Lions face a third down and 10 at the Ottawa 33, 3.13 left. And Larry Kuharich has sent Louis Pasaglia into the game to kick a field goal with 3.13 to go. If Pasaglia makes it, the spread will be down to 11 points. Flutie is holding. Taking a long time to get this underway. Pasaglia's kick is wide to the right. Scott Flagel will waste as much time as he can and concede a single point. And he's really rolling it up. The clock down to 246 left. An interesting decision by Larry Kuharich. As the Ottawa Rough Riders lead by 13 with 246 left. In the fourth quarter at Lansdowne Park, the BC Lions with a single on a wide Pasaglia field goal try. And Louis really had little chance to make that field goal good, as we'll show you in a minute. Ottawa has the ball back from their 35-yard line. They fumbled it the last time they had it. Conrad carries up the middle and gains eight yards and was very careful to hang on to the ball. Well, the kicker gets used to kicking the ball from a spot and watch Flutie where he puts the ball to the inside or to the outside of the tee. Fumbles the, the snap. Uh, Pasaglia really doesn't have a chance to make that kick. It's amazing Pasaglia got it as close to the uprights as he did. As Doug Flutie just didn't quite get the handle on it the way he wanted and was unable to get it down. And having watched Flutie in the first quarter and the way he started off, it's amazing that he cooled down. 
I mean, it really looked like he was going to have himself a heck of a football game. Ryder, second and two at their 43 yard line. A handoff to Conrad, and he gets the first down, and just as importantly, hangs onto the ball. 208 left. Ottawa leading by 13. All the BC Lions will stay in the East, and we'll have the second game of their Eastern Road Trip from the Sky Dome in Toronto, Saturday night, 7:30 Eastern. Join us, BC in Toronto. And I expect to see Matt Dunnigan. That's the date that they were shooting for to get him back in the lineup. And if all has gone well in his therapy and recovery, I expect to see him back guiding that hurry or no huddle offense. Argos at three and five, badly in need of a win. So will BCB. Damon Allen is going to put it up long to Stacey Dossie. And it's intercepted by Robert Holland. They will roll him down at the 28 yard line. A minute 44 to go. And the Lions down by 13. And you would wonder why Allen would not just keep moving it on the ground and waste time. He obviously thought he could catch the Lions napping and put another score up. Well, the ball's underthrown. It gives the secondary man a chance to recover or at least come underneath right here. It's a, it becomes a jump ball. And it's won by Robert Holland. Good tight coverage. And when the coverage is outside of the reach of the secondary man, so at least your receiver has a chance to go get it. But only your receiver, no one else. So the Lions are still alive. It's barely. Pow Pow puts it up long. And he must do it.
is unable to get the ball away, but there is a flag down, and 59 seconds remain. Well, that one won't count. Greg Stuman, who has been off the ball like a rocket all evening, got off just a little bit too early that time. Can't do that! So Alka will have to wait for another chance. 45. First and five. It is now a tie game at Winnipeg Stadium. Trevor Kennard has kicked a 24-yard field goal. Six minutes left. The Stampeders and Blue Bombers tied 29-29. First and five, BC Lions from the 49 of Ottawa. And it's a screen that Bruce Holmes broke up beautifully. The ball was dropped, but Holmes would have been right there to make the play anyway, even though there were two BC blockers on him. Excellent read by Holmes. Simply watches the offensive lineman leave, reads the running back, almost like if he was in manned coverage, close enough almost to pick it up if he got a little lucky. Second down and five, 55 seconds left in the fourth quarter. The Lions trailing by 13. Joe Pow Pow puts it out to the sideline, and it's caught nicely by Alexander for a first down, 48 seconds to go. Lions keep the drive going, but they need to get it into the end zone in a big hurry if they're going to have any chance of recovering a short kickoff and scoring again, which is what they need to do if they're going to win this game. Tall order. Paul Paul lines them up from the Ottawa 33, and the clock, of course, starts. And Paul Paul looks down the sideline, and it's complete. No, they really was out of bounds when he came down with the ball. Emmanuel Tolbert on the receiving hand inside the Ottawa Five, but he did not come down in bounds. There wasn't much room to begin with because of the coverage was forcing him to the outside. That's what you want. There's a little bit of help coming over by Ian Patterson. But he makes that adjustment to the football. And he makes the jump, and his jump puts him on the white line. Proper call, 35 seconds left. Lions second down and 10. Pow Pow throws complete down to the 15-yard line. Ray Alexander, another first down, 29 seconds to go. Again, BC has to get it into the end zone, or this is all just window dressing. As they trail 41 to 28. Lions simply just running their slots upfield and bringing their wide receivers down 10 and in. Holmes blitz leaves the middle open because Flagel's dropping deep. Pow Pow back to pass over the middle and he completes it to Lorenzo Graham down to the 10 yard line for a gain of about 522 seconds left on the clock. Which is the big enemy of the BC Lions now. And if you're wondering why this game is still going, which started three and a half hours ago, we had a 20 to 25 minute weather delay in the third quarter. Pow Pow in the end zone, touchdown. Emmanuel Tolbert with 15 seconds remaining. So the Lions still have a chance, however slim, but there was a flag on that play and the offside is against Ottawa, so the touchdown will stand. The Riders do make it tough on themselves, Thanks don't they? Throwing to the corner. Tolbert forces number 18 Patterson inside and makes the break to that corner. And that's where Pow Pow has to and does put the football. A Ten yard touchdown pass to Emmanuel Tolbert and a bad uh, effort on the convert. Doug Flutie winds up tackled and it's 41 to 34 for the Ottawa Rough Riders with 15 seconds left. Well, every point counts, and these are crucial. The, the snap is a little bit behind Flutie, and he has to make an adjustment almost to the point of getting off his knee and catching the ball. Subsequently, because he turns around, watch, up high, his knee drops down. Now he's on both knees. He has no time to pin it. been a great night for Doug Flutie and for many other members of the BC Lions who have 15 seconds left 
to score a touchdown that would tie this game and send it into overtime. The Lions go on from here to Toronto, and that's our next game on the Canadian Football Network. BC and the Argos, 7.30 Eastern time, Saturday night. We invite you to be with us. Steve Goldman has just called a timeout. He wants to make sure that everybody knows where they should be on what will be a BC Lions short kickoff. Well, Rick Ryan has been doing the kickoffs for the BC Lions, but when it comes to the specialty kind of thing, Lou Pisaglia will come in and be the kicker. Oh, short the, kick. If the Riders draw everybody up real short, maybe Pisaglia will kick it deep and hope one of his fast teammates can get down and recover it. I don't think they'll do that, although Dossie and Barnes are up about the Ottawa 45-yard line. And now we have another stoppage in play. And I don't know what this is about, as Steve Goldman, Damon Allen comes out to talk with George Black, the head referee. <laughs> Allen conferring with Goldman, who then relates something to Black. Kick off. Just kick off, team now. Kick off, team. I think Ottawa is going to, they do have the option to receive or kick off. Qua has chosen to kick off. Kick off will occur from their 35 yard line. And that's what they're going to do. You don't see it a lot. Well, I don't know why you'd give the team that needs a touchdown to tie the game the football and I'm talking about out and out give it to them which is what you're doing when you elect to kick off now sure the Lions could short kick off and recover it but that play has a very low percentage of success anyway that's the decision Steve Goldman has made and the Ottawa Rough Riders won't have any picnic of who they're going to kick the ball to it's either Kennard Martin or Graham Graham coming into this game has averaged 30 yards per return I'm sure Dean Dorsey will keep the ball on the ground to try to kick it to the, a couple of the people in the wedge. Lorenzo so. Graham is 28 and he's had some very large kickoff returns in recent games. Dean Dorsey pounds it low and it's caught on the fly by a BC player at the 48 yard line. 12 seconds left for the Lions now. So they'll get a couple of plays. Tony Bisco on the receiving end. They'll get at least two plays to try and put the ball in the end zone and tie the game. And could it happen again to the Ottawa Rough Riders? Tell you what, we talked about it in the opening. We've talked about it with coaches. You can't play for two and a half, three and a half quarters. The game is 60 minutes long, and it's corny to say it, but. This is a case where one team hasn't played the full 60 minutes. Well, now we have another stoppage in play by head referee George Black to confer with the other officials. 12 seconds remaining. We had a 20 minute, 20 to 25 minute weather delay in the third quarter because of a severe lightning storm. Black explaining something to Pow Pow, and again, I. I can't even imagine what that would be. I'm not sure why we can't just finish the game. Oh, with 12 seconds, you'd think they'd get a, a couple of cracks at it. All right, let's see if the Lions can get it in the end zone. Papa will have to throw it deep. He puts it downfield to the 43-yard line to Tony Dennis. Five seconds left, and a timeout is called by the BC Lions with five seconds remaining, and that's all BC will have left is the one play. The Riders are making an adjustment defensively. They're bringing out or taking out John Crofty, 73, and bringing in an extra defensive back. That's Kyle Hall. And right now, before the ball's even close to being snapped, the secondary of the Riders are 25, 30 yards deep and still going back. Well, 
Now the Lions, now these are plays you work on in practice. The Lions will put all their receivers, or most of them, to one side, in this case the right side of the field. Larry Willis is out of the game, so they don't have one of their key weapons. And then Pow Pow will throw it as far as he can throw it and hope something lucky happens. And it's knocked away by Derek White and the Ottawa Rough Riders, who don't like to have things come easy, obviously, will win the game over the BC Lions. 41 to 34, the second win of the year for Steve Goldman's Ottawa Rough Riders. They are now two and six, and just two points behind the Toronto Argos in the East. The BC Lions slip to two, five, and one on the season.